Welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. If you are starting a boron build, you might be wondering what to do about the printed parts. Boxy Prints has sponsored this video with printed parts. I just want to talk about the three main options that you have if you're considering uh, printing parts or getting parts for your provisioning parts for your boron. So really the first one, of course, is to buy the parts like I'm going to show here in a second. The second one is to utilize the Voron printed, printed forward service or PIF. And the third one is to print your own parts. Um, all of those, of course, have trade-offs, but uh, stay tuned and I'll be talking about that. All of the parts that I received came in these plastic bags, nicely wrapped, and they're very complete. So everything that I've got here that you can see, um, the, this is just a small sample of it. There's actually a lot more. But um, these parts were all printed and provided, and uh, I, I opted for the fold meal deal. So I have parts for both the skirts as well as uh, the, the core machine. I'm very pleased with the quality of these prints. You can see that um, there's really no significant artifacting. There's a little bit of a close-up of the consistency of the layers on the prints. You can see a little bit of sparkle in this as well. Now I am building a Voron Trident, and I opted to go for a stealth burner. And here you can see all of the uh, dwarf red uh, accent parts that I that were printed. And I think these look really good. Here's a quick screenshot of the red dwarf from Fusion Filaments that was used. Here you can see the thorium filver. Uh, and yes, I did say that correctly. But look how clean these parts are. Close up of another part. Just want to give you an idea of the quality of these. I think they're really on, on par. And here's the website where you can get this wonderful, these wonderful printed parts. Uh, you can see that there are parts available for Trident, the Voron V01, and also the V24, and this gives you a little bit of an idea of the price range. Printed Forward is another great option, and this is a program that is set up within the Voron community and, and managed by it. There are some really stringent requirements to get into the Printed Forward program and be a provider, and the people that are doing it are pretty much all over the place, uh, all over the U.S., all over the world and uh, they're going to be providing you with either with pretty much the the core parts that you're going to need to do printing so they might not provide you with like say all of the skirts because they're going to expect you to print that later um, the nice thing about that is you're going to pay a little probably a little bit less than what you would pay if you were to have somebody do your parts commercially now i personally have not used the print it forward program but i have seen printers and i have seen plenty of parts examples in the voron discord so I know that there, there are some really high quality parts and I would say they're, they're very similar and on par to what I showed earlier with the boxy printed service. So one of the most popular options of course is printing your own parts and that's not a bad option at all, especially if you have an enclosed printer. So I've got a few different printers. I've got a Voron 2.4. I've built my own enclosure on this uh, Lulzbot Sidekick. I also even have a Prusa Mini that's enclosed and I have uh, two Voron 0.1s that are enclosed. So for me, um, just having that enclosure is going to be a big help. But there are a lot of trade-offs uh, and things that you need to be aware of when you're printing parts on your own, especially if you're a first-time builder. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the common challenges that you might run into. One of the main things that you need to be concerned about is having an enclosure. And the reason for that is when you're printing ABS or ASA, you're going to have to make sure that you have everything sealed off and there's no drafts coming in because the drafts, they're going to cause corners to lift up what that ends up doing is it ultimately warps your prints and you're not going to be able to use them. Boron team primarily recommends ABS or ASA. I tend to use ASA. I've used this Polylite ASA from Polymaker and I've had really good luck with it. Benefits of ASA, which is primarily what this is printed in, one of my Boron Zeros from LDO, is that it has a higher, a slightly higher heat deflection than ABS and when you're printing at really high temps, this chamber may up may get up to maybe 50 to 55, maybe even 60 degrees Celsius. So that's a lot to handle for heat. That's why you can't really use PETG or PLA because it's eventually going to warp. Um, a lot of people in the Discord ask about that. They also ask, well, what about, you know, um, can I do resin prints? Well, the problem with resin is it doesn't accept heat inserts very well, and you're going to be using heat inserts all across uh, the printed parts. Um, they're kind of hard to see because there's screws in them, but... One of the things that you notice on my Voron parts, some of them are just a little bit over extruded um, when I was printing. So I'm overall, I'm pretty happy with them. But again, when you when you go through somebody either when you go through somebody that prints these commercially uh, as a business, or whether you go through the Voron Print It Forward program, you're going to get really high quality parts. Definitely a little bit better than what I've got here. Now this is my original Voron 0.1 that I built, and you may recognize it from the build series. 
This Voron, I actually, um, I did not have a Voron because it was my first one. So I, I used my Prusa Mini to print this. And I'm pretty happy with, you know, the quality of the parts. Uh, they actually look really good. You might argue there's a tiny bit of uh, maybe under extrusion on the top layer. So they're definitely not perfect, but I'm, I'm very happy with them. And they're certainly uh, holding up. I've probably got over a thousand hours on this printer now. And I've had no issues um, in terms of the movement. I've had no problems with it. So turned out very well. The enclosure that I used, it's a uh, IKEA LAC enclosure. This worked out well. I was printing, I printed both ABS and ASA. I, sometimes I use glue stick just to help and maybe a brim, but uh, just something this simple works pretty well. And it's, it's actually fairly cheap to, to do one of these too. I'm willing to spend the time and make the investment in calibrating your printer. Um, it's you can definitely get similar quality parts to what you might be able to buy commercially This is something that I printed on my Voron 2.4 and uh, this happens to be PETG But it turns out it turned out really well, but I did spend probably about a week uh, Tuning this right and getting all the input shaper tune the pressure advance um, <clears throat> Just the extrusion multiplier So there's a, quite a bit of tuning that you have to do in order to get to this level of quality But it certainly can be done so I'm going to include in the video description a guide that is really helpful, or a link to a guide by Andrew Ellis. So if you have a Voron already and you're running Clipper, this is pretty much the guide to use. It's going to help you fine-tune your Voron printer. Um, it's also going to have some ideas for other printers, but uh, you really need, you know, you're going to get the most value out of it if you have a Voron and you're running Clipper and you're using Super Slicer. Right, so in summary, you have a lot of options. Buy your parts like I did. You can use the Voron Print It Forward program, or you can, of course, print your parts. I would say if you're an initial Voron builder, if this is your first build, um, you definitely should consider buying your parts. When you factor in the cost of filament and failures and time to print, and then also the effort that it's going to take to calibrate maybe your non-Voron printer, uh, it re there's really a strong cost-benefit to using a provider like Boxy. Um, if, if on the other hand, you've already got a Voron, maybe you're a, a very experienced uh, builder, printer, and you like to tinker, then certainly go for it and print your parts. Spend the hours just calibrating and tuning and getting things where you need to. You're going to have other benefits by doing that as well. And somewhere in the middle, if you really want to have the top quality parts with confidence, and you're willing to maybe get in line behind others, you're probably going to save a little bit of cost as well at the expense of potentially a little bit of time, but the Voron Print It Forward program is great. There are several providers. They're also all over the, all over the U.S. as well as uh, the world. That may be a better option for you. All right, well, I hope this video has been helpful, and thanks again for watching Greg's Maker Corner. Please feel free to leave, an, leave a comment or uh, certainly a like and a subscribe. Very much appreciate it, and thanks again.